The electromagnetic gun seemed destined to be the most innovative weapon of recent years. The arms industry was undergoing a revolution of some kind. But what is it really? First, let's define the concept of the electromagnetic gun. Are you familiar with all of this? In any case, we're here to teach you a little more about the subject. Are you ready? The electromagnetic cannon is an experimental weapon. It achieves a muzzle velocity greater than that of a shell fired by a conventional propellant charge. Do you know what muzzle velocity is? Don't panic, we're here to explain it to you. It's simply the speed at which a projectile leaves the barrel of a weapon. What's more, the fact that the electromagnetic gun contains no propellant charge reduces the amount of explosive present. This means that in combat, a warship carries much less hazardous material, and considerably reduces the risk of explosion. The electromagnetic gun made its appearance in 2007. A San Diego-based nuclear physics and defense company designed the Blitzer electromagnetic cannon prototype. It was capable of firing projectiles at speeds of up to Mach 5. During test phases in 2009 and 2010, its higher acceleration levels reached 60,000 grams. The electromagnetic cannon has reached a veritable craze in many countries. Indeed, the arms race is on like never before. In fact, it has never really ended. Many nations have taken up the challenge. For over 15 years, the Americans have been battling with the electromagnetic cannon project. $500 million have gone up in smoke for this project, which is still struggling to see the light of day. Yet, it seemed to be well on the way. The Office of Naval Research began working on an electromagnetic gun as early as 2005. The Navy had even announced demonstration firing at sea during 2016. After numerous postponements, the hypervelocity projectile intended for the US electromagnetic gun is now used in conventional gunpowder guns. Admittedly, this weapon of war has very good statistics. However, we're still a long way from the promises made at the outset. Other countries are entering the race. These include Japan, Russia, and China. The objectives of an electromagnetic gun are very easy to achieve on paper. But what is the reality? It's simply not the case. First of all, it is necessary to generate a large amount of energy in a very short space of time. This means we're dealing with colossal electromagnetic power. It would be equivalent to that required by a city of 500,000 inhabitants. As a result, energy generators are often very bulky, representing a serious handicap for the ships that carry them. There's also talk of the joule effect heating the rails to excess. They are also subject to intense friction, which wears them down far too quickly. As a result, a luminous plasma is formed. Last but not least, this electrical power does not allow high firing rates. Yet, this is essential in anti-aircraft warfare. Let's turn now to Europe. In 2020, a consortium called Pilum intends to develop an electromagnetic gun worthy of the name. Its range would be extremely long. It is used as a railgun. It would be capable of propelling projectiles at hypersonic speeds. We're talking 7,200 kilometers an hour, which is three times faster than current missiles. This would enable it to hit targets over 200 kilometers away. As a result, the armed forces exposure to the enemy is greatly reduced. Flight time is also reduced, as are safety conditions. Indeed, the fact that propellant powder is no longer required is a relief in terms of safety. Economically speaking, it is also much more advantageous. This machine could revolutionize artillery. But is it really the case? We don't really know, because Europe is conducting its research in complete secrecy. With a budget of 1.5 million euros, it looks particularly promising. But is this really the case? Aren't we going down the same road as the United States? It would appear so. Railgun production has been put on hold for the foreseeable future. Take the example of the Navy, which did not ask for any funds to continue its railgun research. Instead, it opted for lasers and hypersonic missiles. Nevertheless, parliamentarians decided not to give up. They allocated $15 million to the development of the weapon. What do you think it will be used for? The money isn't enough to continue the weapon's useful development, but it does keep it alive. After years of failure, Congress has backed the army into a corner. The project's progress had to be detailed. It also decided to grant a much larger sum than that requested by the Pentagon. The Navy had only asked for $10 million. However, parliamentarians granted it triple that amount. But why such stubbornness? It all seems to be a question of politics. Indeed, China's advances in this field are of great concern to the United States. And yet, in recent months, the confrontations in Ukraine have put long-range fires back in the spotlight. When it comes to quality and quantity, it's vital to keep up with the time. For this, the development of the electromagnetic guns remains a possible solution. For this reason, the French Armament Procurement Agency is pulling out all the stops. In a nutshell, this involves sending a projectile between two rails. A very significant difference in electrical potential is generated. Admittedly, the charge is not explosive, but its speed is so great that it ionizes the atmosphere. 
This weapon therefore maintains particularly interesting. The range of conventional artillery is limited to a maximum of 80 kilometers. Missiles, on the other hand, can strike several hundred kilometers away. But this is very costly. It is therefore not possible to use them in every situation. The only solution seems to be Pilum. We mentioned this earlier in the video. Unfortunately, this project is not yet complete, and time is running out. It's essential to enable the armed forces to regain their strength, while at the same time shedding light on the world's military future. All possible avenues are being explored, including the nuclear option. However, only a few countries are in a position to pursue research in the field of electromagnetics. These are, of course, the United States, Japan, and France. The latter two have decided to pool their resources in this field. The first electromagnetic gun is already on sale. It's true that laser guns are being tested in many countries. Take Japan, for example. The country wants to equip itself with a hypersonic anti-missile umbrella equipped with electric rail guns. But the technology is set to take leaps and bounds. Coil guns make their appearance and are a runway success. Instead of two electromagnetic rails propelling the conductive ammunition, they feature a single gun surrounded by several electric coils. These coils successively push the ferromagnetic projectile. The projectile is then projected with great force. From a technological point of view, railguns, unlike coil guns, are much easier to build. However, the maximum projectile speed is higher. How is this possible? High voltage, high amperage, high velocity electrical switches make it possible. American company Arc Flash Labs has just unveiled its GR1 Anvil Gauss. This is the first coil gun to be used in both military and security contexts. It is the first portable gun with an electromagnetic barrel available on the market. The weapon should be capable of firing ammunition with, at the very least, the same firepower as 22 caliber rifles. But is it really effective? Is the system really safe? In any case, this weapon is attracting interest from many countries. Indeed, it is capable of firing a wide variety of metal projectiles using powerful magnets. It is also possible to regulate the power of the shot according to the distance from the target. Several variations of the electromagnetic gun are now envisaged. Numerous devices will be introduced in the new military programming law. It's high time to shed some light on a military future that is sometimes all too gloomy. It's time to prepare for the wars of the future with the equipment of tomorrow. Out with yesterday's or today's equipment. Technology is working wonders. Let's put them to good use. So, what do you think? What does the future hold for the electromagnetic gun? How will the artillery industry evolve? Don't hesitate to give us your opinion by leaving us a comment below. We look forward to hearing from you. See you soon on ATEC.